answer is John and Fed. Good morning, as we go to the uh, okay. to learn some chassidus today, learn some Tanya. I uh, printed out this uh, this uh, paper here. Again, uh, I want to thank Elliot for working on this, and uh, it's more, a little more clearer. We can get more clearer. I, I'm gonna but get um, after that, but it talks about chachma, the aspect of wisdom. Chachma bina das. Chachma, the Alter Rebbe, and we're holding right now on page 79, I believe, 78, 79, the end of chapter, coming to the end of chapter 19, chapter 18, the Alter Rebbe talks about the concept of wisdom. And I believe, in my simple understanding, what the Alter Rebbe wants to explain the aspect of wisdom. I'm sorry, what page? Uh, 78, 78, 78. 78. Yeah, the Alta Rebbe talks about wisdom. He explains he starts to explain the aspect of wisdom. Wisdom is, as he says, is a concept of koyachma, which means potential. Potential, potential of what, as it says, of potential that the chachma, that in essence, a human being has within him the concept of potential. It's important for a human being to realize that the potential is not something that's out of him, something that's far away from him, potential, any kind of potential that he might have in life, but actually any potential is within him. And therefore, the Abishta gives every person the capability of, of, of transformation, of uh, self-transformation in life, and he has the capability to change his life in any one kind of direction he wants to change it, whether it's for the good or for the bad. And there's nobody that has lost the concept of their wisdom because if, unless they are brain dead and they have no capability, they are chas v'shalem in dementia, chas v'shalem. And none of us should be with that. That's why we say every morning, the Ebishter gave us with his grace, he gave us the concept of chachma bina v'das. God gave us the, 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 the concept of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Because that capacity tells every person that he has whatever he thinks he is in, whatever situation he thinks that he's involved with, he's got the capability of potential within him. And every person has a potential. It's up to him. And he cannot uh, say it's up to somebody else. Because it's totally in his hands. Chachma, wisdom, wisdom. So he, you know, he hits his wisdom, first flash of intel, intelligence. But the, the, the Chassidus explains wisdom as the capability of Ein Seif. Wisdom has the concept of infinity. Because it's above, once it comes in understanding, then it's already limited. The second something comes into understanding, then it's understood A or B. You cannot have two understandings at the same moment. So you can have an understanding of one thing and then understand something else. It's hard to comprehend two things at once. But wisdom, in the world, in the world of wisdom, there can be opposites. In the world of wisdom, there can be the concept of, that can have different concepts going into, and there can be many, many wisdoms within one understanding. So... So wisdom is something that the Rebbe explains is something that I I am beyond that. And therefore, the truth is, in the, in the level of wisdom, there's nobody who has the essence of wisdom. So therefore, in the level of wisdom, in the level of understanding, there are those who understand better and there are those who understand less. There are those who have the capacity of understanding very deep and there's those who don't have that capacity to have deep understanding. It's they're limited to how much they can understand and how much they can comprehend. But in the level of wisdom, in the concept of wisdom, we're all equal because we, in that aspect of change, even the way we understand, to understand it differently, to have a little bit of a, of a higher understanding, to have a little bit of a deep, everybody can, every person could do that. Every person can 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 thank the Abish to every day for for wisdom because every day he can become a little bit smarter and every day he can become a little better there's no concept i was i was there I, then why you need to be here today if there's not to become a better day 
if not to change the day into a better day. So therefore, it's in your, it's in my capability because God gave me wisdom. And since God gave me wisdom, it's not something I have to go find out there. Something within my, my DNA, my makeup of who I am. So therefore, every single one of us could step out of the realm of yesterday and change today. There's nobody who can stop him. There's nobody who can tell him not to do it. There's nobody who ultimately can change who he is but himself. And therefore, the Alter Rebbe, it's very important. You know, that, that this is an important concept that we have wisdom. And we should inspire to wisdom. We should constantly try to acquire greater wisdom. Right? Because the more wisdom we acquire, yesterday's wisdom is not today's wisdom. Yesterday's wisdom is not today's. Last year's wisdom is surely not this year's wisdom. And it's a new beginning. It's a whole new world. Every day is a whole new world. Because every day is a new step in, 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 in the concept of the way I'm going to look at myself and the way I'm going to think about myself. I'm not going to think about myself like I thought yesterday. I'm not going to think about myself today at all the way I thought of myself yesterday. And that's why I said yesterday, very powerful, Sikh of the Rebbe, not, we say every day, Shaloi Asani Ovid. Every day I make a bracha that I'm not a slave. Because every day, the truth is, I, with my wisdom, can be a total different person. Nobody can stop me. Better. A hundred percent better. I might not be smarter, but I can be better. That's it. I might not be. I won't, might not understand things uh, more because I have a limited understanding. But not everything is based on understanding. It's based on who I really am, is what I want to do. And it's not always everything is based on understanding. Should have understanding. They wish to gave us understanding, so we use that understanding too. But there are certain, not everything has to be based on understanding. And surely when I start doing something, it doesn't have to be based on understanding. It has to be based because that's what I want to do. I want my free will to do A. I want to do B. That's why you have in Chesidus, you have the concept of Torah and you have the concept of mitzvot. Two concepts in it. There's a concept of Torah. Torah is wisdom. It's, under, it's actually understanding. We can understand the Torah. And therefore, you should learn Torah. And everybody's going to learn Torah different. And then there's a mitzvah. A mitzvah is the will of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. A mitzvah is the will of God. That expresses one's will. I say that do your will like his will. What does the Abish do want? Not that you should do will because, oh, I got to do it. It's a commandment. No, it should become your will. Will is greater than wisdom. Actually, wisdom comes because of will. So when a person has a will, he has a, he has a, a will to do something. Nothing stands before the will of a human being. So therefore, even though, again, I'm not, we need understanding and we need to comprehend the Torah and the Torah wants you should comprehend every mitzvah you do and every, uh, and, and you should know the Torah, learn and learn. The mission says, if you don't understand something, learn it again, learn it again, learn it again. You'll come, you'll come to understand it. It's, 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 understanding is a, is, a, is, a, is a lifetime. The understanding of Torah is a lifetime. It's not a one day thing, and if you want a quick, you know, quick job on understanding, then you, then you, then you, then it's impossible. You know, like the like the, the non Jew came to Hillel and said, "Teach me the whole Torah on one foot." Yeah, he told him what he told him. He told him go do a mitzvah. You know, want you want to go go uh, you know go do uh, go do a good deed. What should I tell you? Because that's really everything. After the Yachka, make love thy neighbor as thyself, or don't do other ones, don't do it. And that's really the whole thing. The whole concept is, is the concept of a mitzvah. That's really why, because that's the Ratzon of David. That's the will of God. You want to understand God? You'll never, it's a, it's a lifelong experience. 
That's the beauty of Jesus Christ. It's not, it never gets boring because you always go understand better. You can always understand more. Not only because you got smarter, because the thing is deeper. Trust me, every everything you learn in Torah is deeper and deeper and deeper. You know, I'm learning, uh, you learn halacha. But it's interesting. Some people like halacha because it just tells you, do this, don't do that, leave me alone. Uh, do this, don't do that. Right? That's the easy thing, halacha. Do this, don't do that. Nope. No, but halacha, but if you learn halacha, you'll know it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not true. It's not do this and don't do that. Because you have five different people, five different uh, commentators who say what means to do this and don't do that. And how far don't you do that? And what is the meaning of don't do that? And that's the beauty. Yeah, this Allah is the Jewish law is don't do this and don't do that, but it's not not true. It's very complex. Very complicated Allah. Allah is very complicated, very intense, very intense. Any law. Say the law is even more intense. More, more complicated, more deep, based on many different, different, different concepts, and 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 uh, how how halacha comes to be halacha. Because understanding is unlimited in in the halacha itself, in in the simple law, in the simple law, do this and don't do that. There's many, many different ways to understand the concept of don't do this and don't do that. And that's how the law continues to evolve, so to say. The law continues to live. And Teda continues to live. But at the same moment, the Teda is the Ratzin of the Abishta. The Teda mitzvahs are the Ratzin of God, which is above understanding. That's the Ratzin. That's the will of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The Abishta doesn't want you to do mitzvahs because he's, uh, he's, it's good to be king. And he's good to make laws. And everybody that says Hineni, I'll follow it. God wants us to say the same that my will should become God's will. That means ultimately I should want it. Not because God wants it only, because I want it. Why do I want it? I don't know why. Because I'm a Jew. Because that's who I am. That's why I want it. Uh, not everything has to be has to be understood. Right? Not everything has to be, and it's beautiful to we understand things and we should understand more things, but not things could be because that's who I am. Why do I like uh, chocolate ice cream? Because that's who I like. And this concept of will is very powerful because we can have evil wills. Just like we have good will, we can have evil wills. And that, that is also a negative thing, and it's hard to overcome one's evil will. Right? Because he cannot explain to him why he has this will. He can't rationalize to himself why he has the will. It's your animal soul. It's your animal soul. His rotten, because your animal soul has rotten too. <laughs> Just like your godly soul has a will, your animal soul has a chachman with rotten too. And his rotten, his will, is, a, is, a, is, is also above comprehension. Because that's what he wants, that's what he wills. That gives him a, a, a that gives him excitement. Why I don't know. And 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 you cannot explain it to anybody, and you cannot it'd be hard for you to explain to yourself. The only way you can say to yourself, it's ra, it's evil. This will is evil, and you know it's evil, and therefore I have to get rid of this will. I have to fight it to get rid of certain wills that I have. Because it's evil, simple as that. There's no, there's no, there's no way to rationalize it. That's like the interesting expression. That's talking about general when somebody's a murderer, for example. The Torah says you have to kill him. Why? Not because you're taking revenge. No gain out of killing a life for no. What are you going to gain out of that? The reason is. You need to eradicate evil from your midst. Mikibecha hmm. means from yourself. And the Abish says, Mikibecha means from you. <laughs> the Pasik is telling you that some evils you have to eradicate. Because they're not a concept of you have I have certain tendencies 
that can become a, a, a something that's above my comprehension. It's it's it, I I don't comp I don't it's, it's it, it has grabbed me beyond understanding. It has grabbed me, has taken over me that it became my will, and that's possible. That's for shalom. God forbid. And the Abisha says the only way you got to get rid of it is you got to you got to eradicate this evil. So first of all, you have to recognize it's evil. You're the second, you're going to rationalize that it's right, or that it's good, then it's not evil. So first thing, you have to recognize what is evil. What is good and what is evil. And what's that same emotional reaction when you say evil? I know, I know, I'm sorry. What is good and what is the opposite of good? <laughs> No, but the problem is that you have certain people, and that's we all are saying we have we have certain tendencies that um, that we don't want to say it's evil, and basically we don't want to say it's evil because we want it. And if you say it's evil, oh, it's bothering me. That's evil, but that's what it is. If I have a desire for something that's not good, it's it, I have to I, I need to say the truth. To myself, it's like to make an announcement. I need to say the truth to myself. This thing is evil. I'm not talking about something you're hurting somebody else. You're hurting yourself. If this thing is self-destructive of yourself, then it's evil. What did I tell you? You can you're gonna, you're gonna rationalize it. You're gonna say that it's no. You have to ultimately come to the conclusion that's that what it is. Because then you can deal with it to what it is. So the Gemara example says anger is evil. So anger is evil. Finished. People don't want to say that because they want to be angry. <laughs> they want to justify their anger. So the Gemara says no, anger is evil. Don't justify it. Not killing anybody when you get angry, but anger is evil because it you need to stop it. You need it needs to be it needs to be a baita becha. You need to get angry because anger is irrational. You can get frustrated. That's a rational concept. People do get frustrated, but anger is evil. That's it. And it, when you can categorize it, what it is. Then you maybe can deal with it. I mean, you cannot rationalize maybe with anger. That's the Gemara says when somebody gets angry, don't argue with him, walk away. Because you cannot rationalize with anger. You need to you need to separate yourself from, from an angry person. You need to go away. You need to stop the stop the conversation. Because talk is only going to make it more angry. Because rationalization. Doesn't irrationalization doesn't want rationalization, <laughs> right? Doesn't want it. And the more you rationalize, irrational, the rational beca irrational becomes more irrational. Does Tanya talk about how to eradicate? Um, yeah, the evil? sure. Tanya talks about it in one way. In one way, is the space I don't want to be evil. I don't want to be evil. Not a moment, Doctor. I said, lady, you have to say to yourself. Don't want to be evil. I don't. I, I know I have issues, but I don't want to be evil. And this is evil, and I don't want to be evil. So nobody wants to be evil, and you got to stop yourself. We need. I need to stop myself from being evil. But does it talk about how? Yeah, I just told you. I don't want okay. to be evil. <laughs> simple as that. I don't want to be evil. That's the problem. Yeah, so I don't yeah. want. To be evil. I don't want to be evil. I know I have an effort of Bahamas. I have desires, but I don't want to be evil. Uh, yeah, yeah, because ultimately it comes down to I don't want to I don't want to be evil. I don't want to be evil. Why would any person want no? Because a person won't say that. He won't say that. He, an angry person will never say he's evil. And if you tell an angry person they're evil, they're getting more angry. Because you cannot tell an angry person is evil. You gotta tell himself. I, I don't was... want to be evil. What? I thought the Rebbe never saw anybody as evil. Maybe no, again, I don't look at anybody. I'm talking to a person to himself. Okay. A person needs to talk to himself. 
Nobody's telling him he's evil because that's not going to help him. Telling an angry person he's evil is going to make is not going to help him. Make him angry. It's going to make him angrier. Make him angrier. And, we'll and that's why we and, that, and the truth is we tell angry people that are evil and it gets creates even more anger because it, Rabbi, it's Rabbi. Yes, Rabbi. It's they're not they're evil. Not, they're, they're, they're acting in an evil way. Okay, they're it's acting in an evil way. Thank oh, yeah. you very much. I appreciate that. They're <laughs> acting in an evil way. Thank you very much, Yechavit. I always come to help. Okay, great. Can you make the connection between idol worship and evil? And so again, the, um, idol worship is the total opposite of Judaism. But I mean, it's a total opposite. Evil, anger. evil because also anger. anger is the same thing. Yeah, anger is a concept something? where a guy doesn't, a person rec thinks that he is the God himself, mm -hmm. and uh, there's nothing that uh, that uh, that he can do wrong. Or he can uh, he can do the opposite of what is what is true, and uh, we all have that capability of doing something wrong. We all have the capability of doing something the opposite of what we we really should be. We all have a yetsada. We all have a yetsada that we fall into sin, and that we do things that are wrong. That's nothing wrong. I mean, we should be frustrated about that. We should be frustrated that why do we keep on falling into negative things? Why do we keep on doing this? Why can't Rabbi, we have some? I yeah. worked on this for I worked on this for many years, and the first thing I did was, as you said, I realized that's not okay. And so I realized then, as I learned, that when you bring God into the picture, whatever is happening to you, whatever person is saying, whatever they're saying, is really God speaking to you, and you're being tested. So you Very have good. to trust the fact that everything that's happening is from a Kaddish Baruch The spouse that's upsetting you, it's an opportunity to grow from. Beautiful. Not be angry at. Beautiful. I love it. Thank you. So, it took a long time for me to get there. <laughs> so everybody has to realize that uh, that uh, that uh, when some, somebody tells them something, you know, whatever happens in his life is dear Mitzal Hashem, dear from God. God is trying to challenge him to see what his, what his response is going to be and how is he going to overcome that, 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 that situation that comes forward to, towards him. So he shouldn't get angry. He should realize an opportunity to grow. It's an opportunity to show that his Ratzin, that his real will is not evil, to do evil. His real Ratzin is to do good. And how does a person show that to that thing? That he's not an, as I said, not an avid, I'm not a servant. I'm not servant to my nature, to my tendencies, to my addictions, or whatever it might be. I'm not a servant to that. I'm a servant to God, which gives me true freedom. Abish hey, gives each and every one true freedom. He created us. He gives us life. He gave us everything we need. And he gives you at the same moment, true freedom. Do whatever you want. You want to be good. You want to use it out for good. Good. You want to use it out for bad. That's your choice. That's your choice. So no other entity in the world, no, no kingdom, no government, no officials give you freedom. They tell you, do this. And if not, I'm going to put you in jail. Maybe she gives you freedom. Total freedom. Choose on your own. Have a desire to do what is right. Be free individuals. When there's mental illness, how do they choose? They so that's why there's doctors in the world. There's doctors in the world. You have to go to a doctor. That's your choice. You don't want to get help. Then you don't then, then don't get help. You need to go to a doctor. Don't go to a you have mental health, go to a doctor. You need to go to a doctor, and you gotta follow doctor's uh, doctor's uh, doctor's uh, decisions, because that's what they send doctors in the world, so that they can help you. Not everybody can help themselves. Some people cannot help themselves, and that's another falsity, another egotistical thing. When a person says, "I don't need somebody else to help me out," that's egotistical. They able to put us on the world together, so that we would help each other. And if a doctor tells you something, a rabbi tells you something, then you, if you ask him the question, you should listen to him. No, don't ask the question. 
But don't go to a doctor and then tell the doctor, and then you say, I'm smarter than the doctor. You went to the doctor because he's, because he's smarter than you in right. this all field. Is it right all the time? No. No, I'm not that's saying that. I'm not that's saying that. I'm not saying that. It's a complicated issue. But when a person goes to, to a mental, to a person goes to a doctor and he says, I'm smarter than the doctor, so why do you go to the doctor? You went to the doctor because you trust the doctor has a more knowledge in this concept. If you're not happy, so go to another doctor. But ultimately, the like Gemara says, a, a, a person that's in prison cannot free himself. You need the guy on the other side to get, open the door. Right? You need the guy on the other side to open the door. So the other person, the Avish right. they gave, the Avish they gave the capability for another person that's on the other side of the door to open the door. If it's a doctor, it's a doctor. If it's a good friend, it's a good friend. Depends who has the key. But you need to ask the other people. You say, oh, you want to say, no, I don't want you to help me. I'll open the door myself. Okay, you open the door yourself. I wish you well. You're locked in the other side. How are you going to open the door? You need a miracle. And St. Chalness, you don't rely on miracles. There's another guy on the other side of the door that can help you out. And God sent him as a messenger to help you out. And listen to the uh, him. He'll open up the door, and I'll give you a release to your to your to your to your slavery, to your mental health. And it's a problem. A lot of people are embarrassed that they're locked on the other side of the door. A lot of people are embarrassed. Uh, that, uh, that's a that's a whole problem. Mental uh, mental issues today that uh, that people are embarrassed to go to a doctor. Right? They think that, that you know what what is anybody going to tell me how to run my life. And are you talking about? Are you talking about psychologists, Rabbi Bukit? Psychologists, yeah. therapists, all these are the that Baruch Hashem brought down in the world. All these, all these concepts on the world, Baruch Hashem, to help out another yid, to help another human being. Takes a, takes a, takes a, nothing, nothing negative. nothing to go ask somebody else for help. <laughs> well, we were we were Siddim of the Rebbe. We asked Siddim of the Rebbe. We went to the Rebbe for every question that we had. We went to the Rebbe. We asked the Rebbe what to do. What's so terrible about it? Every, I say, the Mishnah says, I say, every person needs to make a rab, needs to make a, a rabbi who he asks his questions for. Not everything you know in Jewish law, not everything you, you know what to do, what not to do. I say, Make yourself a rab. Ask somebody who can ask the question. And then follow what he, the, the, the Rav says. And do what he says. And so too, the Abish to created doctors, there are many messengers to God. And God created doctors, Baruch Hashem, and psychotherapists and therapists and all the answer, the whole spectrum. And he gave the capability for you to do that. Listen, I had one time in my life, uh, you know, headaches. Went from doctor to doctor. I went to, I don't know, got glasses and, and cranial therapy. And, uh, it took me a long time to find the, the problem, my situation. Went to psychiatrists. I went, to, well, I, I decided I'm going to go to everything and anything to figure out why I had the blinding doctor. Well, it was, it was what? It turned out your shorts were too it turned, it turned out, no, it turned out that you're on, you're on, you're on. Uh, it turned out that I have uh, allergies. That it, that it, it was allergies. So it, it took me like a year and a half of searching. Every doctor went to acupuncture, <laughs> this and that. Got brain surgery, brain uh, imagery. Yeah. My head it was empty, so uh, everything was fine. <laughs> and nothing in there, and it was fine. Uh, but you know what? So therefore, you, you in the ABC, when you have a problem, you have to go pray to God, self understood, learn Tata, but go to go find out a doctor that can help you. And uh, if it takes a long time, if it takes a lot of doctors. Then you do it. You can find ultimately the solution. Because the Abish gave the capabilities, somebody to have the key out there to open up the door for you. And that's the way the Abish created the world. Most people are willing to go to a doctor to fix a broken leg or fix a broken this. They, they're okay with physical issues. You get the mental issues, 
I don't want to talk to anybody. Yeah. I don't want to talk to yeah. I got to solve them myself. No, you don't. So, you I'm, say every when you when you when you make it a when you make a mishabedach for a, for a chayla, you'll see in the bracha refuah shanefesh, refuah saguf, the the healing of the soul and the healing of the body, because they go together, the healing of the soul and the healing of the body. Everything was when you have a trauma in your life, it affects your uh, mental uh, stability. And uh, you need to have the first and nefesh and first, a lot of a lot of a lot of issues that people go through is because they had trauma in life. We all had trauma in life. Well, our parents gave us all the trauma in life. They gave us to begin with a lot of trauma in life. That's it. Everything's blamed on our, on our mothers. They gave us all the trauma the in our life. <laughs> Everything is just right. We are traumatic. We are all traumatized. And I'll bet you and, uh, those who had a C-section and those who did that, if they did a study, they would find a difference you see? In, the, in the reaction. A hundred percent. I was a C-section. That's why I'm normal. So I'm finish. A uh, I'm a C-section. I'm much normal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why are we getting here? Hashem, you got other traumas in life. So, um... <laughs> what? I everybody gives me trauma, so <laughs> I, I got a personal problem. Hello, I got a personal problem. I got problems. Um, uh, we all got problems. We all got trauma, but um, so if you have certain traumas that you need to have help from other people to uh, help you out in your traumas in life, and Baruch Hashem, there's a lot of places to go today and get help for your traumas in life. Baruch Hashem. But then you need to work on yourself because anybody you go to, which I went to, they tell you, they tell you ultimately you have to work on yourself. You have to uh, release yourself. You got to release yourself from your uh, toxicity, from your own, uh, from your own, the way you look at yourself, the way you think about yourself, the way you talk about yourself. The way you act to yourself, you have to realize yourself that you have unbelievable capabilities. You have you have you have you you have your own release release mechanism. The person give you the the person give you the key you can open the door, but you have to walk out of the door, right? What does the expression say? You can take a horse to water, you can't make it drink. Because you have the person himself has to want to walk out the door. The person himself wants to have, that's why I said yesterday, a person could say, I have this adeni. I like to be a slave. I don't want to change. You know, the, 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 I realize I should change. Maybe if I think different, I would be different. No, I have this adeni. I like this. I like it. I like this. this, 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 this I like this jail life. I like being I like, like it. three meals a day. 100%. They make me exercise a little. Let me tell you something. I, meant, I once met a Jew. I met a Jew many like 20 years ago. We went to a jail in upstate Florida. Met this Jew that was in jail for like uh, he was in jail uh, since he was in this was 20 years old. He was now uh, 80 years old. Oh, wow. 60 years in jail. He murdered his uh, his wife. Um, he did so. and, um, and that's another point. Yeah, Jewish man. And uh, they want to let him out, but he doesn't want to go out. He doesn't want to go out. Why well, he says, I have no family, I have nothing outside, I have no life outside, my family doesn't want me, I know my friends don't want me, nobody wants me. Over here, I have everything. Here, I have friends. Here, I'm living. And what will I do outside? And it's a tragic, it's, it's a real real situation that a person doesn't want to go out. He's afraid to go out. In essence, he got, he got, he got his comfortability in, in, in a jail, but really he should go out. And, um, uh, but you can understand the comprehensive the person. The guy did something when he was 20 years old, when he was high on uh, race bus and he, you know, he's in jail already for uh, 60 years. He's 80 years old, whatever. Uh, he should go out. He should go out. Well, yeah, whatever. I'm just saying this. Uh, we, 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 but the truth is, but the truth is, we also. My point is over here is we all get comfortable with the, our environment, just like this guy's in jail sixty years. 
we get we 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 get comfortable in our in our understanding in our bina. We get get comfortable in our understanding of the way we we want life, and the way we decided life is all about. We get comfortable in that, even though it's not such a good life. It's not so good, but we get comfortable in that kind of understanding, and that's it. Al Rebbe and Taylor tries to impress on you. No, don't get comfortable with the way you understand life. So is don't get comfortable in your understanding. Go to Chachma. Go to your wisdom. Go to your Chachma. Go to your wisdom of God. Go to your true will. Everybody wants to be good. Everybody wants to do good. Everybody, and you can do it. You can be good, and you can do good, and you get rid of all your hang-ups and all your, 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 your things. You can do it. If you really wanted to do it, you can do it. You have that capability to do it, if you really wanted to do it. But it's hard to want to do it. It's hard to get out of that tendency. Or some people have to reach rock bottom. Yeah, yeah, but some people reach rock bottom, and they, 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 the rock bottom comes, uh, comes their reality. It's the muscle of the Chavetz Chaim gives the muscle of a, of of a, of a person that's thrown into a dungeon. Those days when they took a family, threw them into a dungeon. You imagine people that live in a dungeon for for twenty, thirty years. You have children, they have grandchildren in this dungeon. They're told about a life and uh, above the dungeon, you know, a life up there. But it's a, it's like a story. Mm-hmm. Right, it's not a real life. They, they, they think life is the real dungeon, right? And maybe they don't want to leave, right? Because the unknown, you know. Oh, there's a life out there. There's a world out there. There's something greater out there. It's beautiful trees. There's a sun. No, no, no that's it's 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 a, it's a baba Misa. This is life. This dungeon is life. This uh, this is where we need to live. This is where we need to prosper. This is where we need it. You have to. It's a metaphor. It is a metaphor. The Chavz Chaim gives this metaphor, I believe. That in essence, that's what Gullahs did to the Jewish nation. Put us in a dungeon mentality that uh, this is life. This is life. And if you get a little light, oh, let's be happy. No, this, but this is life. This is life. Gullahs is life. Gula is a fantasy. You know, like even you have you hear the expression, oh, mes- 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 messianic concepts. You know, you know, even they talk about religious Jews. You know, these messianic, you know, crazy things. You know, believing in you know, in the you know, it's a migdash. Oh, crazy craziness! It's all mishuga, mishuga people, crazy people. When, when, when that's the point, you got to get out of the dungeon. You got to get out of this hole. We got to get out of this dungeon. How beautiful we made this dungeon! How beautiful we made this hole. We taka made this hole beautiful, or oh. this tunnel beautiful. But it's not. It's not real life. This is not. There's, there's a world. There's a greater world out there. There's a greater reality. It's a greater reality for, for, for a Jew. It's a greater reality for humanity. This is not what it's supposed to be. This is we're living in a bubble. We're living in a dungeon. We're living in darkness. This is what uh, what what the Abish wanted for for the world. In a cra- we should live in a crazy world, a world of uh, hatred and murder and destruction and uh, nonstop. This is the normal. This is this is normal. This is the God. <laughs> it's not. It's a dungeon. It's a garden in a dungeon. Wake up and get out of the dungeon. Get out of your dungeon. Get out of your your, your hole. What? So first of all, believe you could get out of the dungeon. That's the first thing. You have to have a munim bis Mashiach. You have to have a munah. You don't have a munah that the the Ramam writes. You don't have a munah. That I'm, 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 I, and it's a peer, uh, uh, not only a muna, a muna in a way that Amram says you have to have a, 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 a yearning. You have to create a yearning. Every one of us needs to create a yearning to go out of this. Not that I just think I could get out of it. I hope to get out of it. Oh, it's a nice thing to get out of it. No, I gotta get out of it. I got to get out of it. And therefore, I'm going to live away like I'm out of it. I'm going to live away like I'm out of it. I'm going to live a Jewish life like I'm out of it. Right? I'm not going to be affected by the world. I'm not going to be affected by the, what people say. I'm going to live a life like I'm out of it. You got to do that. You got to fake it in a way. You make it. Yeah. <laughs> fake it till you make it. Yeah. Uh, with his whole community, went to the Jews 
Yeah. They ask, how did you survive? Oh, really? Yeah. I just yeah. heard YY Jacobson. I just heard this shit this morning. How? And he said, God, you got seven sages to talk to him. Tell him. You connect to the wisdom of Torah. Yeah. You learn Torah. Yeah, learning yeah, learning yeah. Learning yeah. Every morning with Rabbi Jacob. Uh, that's our lifeline. Without Torah. But again, the Torah right? talks, so you look, open the Pasuk, you know, uh, build a sanctuary. It, the Tata, so Hashem can move in. <laughs> the Tata talks about uh, about uh, you know even the Tata in the simple the Tata talks about Eretz Yisrael for example. If you talk that out too loud, that's not the politically correct. In the world that we live in, wow. if you talk about Eretz Yisrael the way the Torah talks about Eretz Yisrael, it's not politically correct. Not politically correct, and they're going to automatically put you in in in, in a category. Of a uh, right wing uh, the sugar now. extremist, right? No, we're not extremists. That's what the Tater says. That's it. It's not something. So it's what our parents lived. It's what our grandparents lived. With Avram, Yitzhak, Yaakov. It's God. It's it's not extremist. It's what the truth is. That's it. Finished. So that's the end of the story. But a Jew needs to live that way. I. It's not even popular around Jews. Uh, but that's what the Tater says. That's it. I don't have to be apologetic uh, to uh, to anybody. Why? Because I, the Tater says so. So I don't have to apologize for God. If he wants to apologize, let him apologize. I don't apologize for him. I don't need to stick up for him. I don't need to apologize for him. I need to say what he's. I, I say what the Tater says, and that's it. The Tater says this is what it is. I gave the land to you. From the river to the sea. I gave the land to, to, to you. And not that I gave the land to you, I gave the land to every Jew for all the last 4,000 years of history. And uh, nobody has, uh, the Rebbe would scream, nobody has the right to give anything away because it's not yours to give away. And it doesn't belong to you. It belonged to every Jew throughout history. And nobody has the right to give it away. The only way you can give it away is if it's attacked and taken away. But to give it away, the Rebbe would scream, we yearn, we cried over those who took away the land for us. But for Jews to give it away, that's like ridiculous. That's the, that's the opposite of anything normal. You give something away that, that you have. and But Jews keep on doing that. Jews keep on doing that. They keep on doing that. Why? Because it's very basic. They don't want to connect to the table. They don't want to say it the way it is. So they are, uh, we have to be politically correct. We don't have to be politically correct. We don't have to be politically correct. They may not know. They know it. They know it. They know it. The Jews surely know it in Israel. Yeah. They they want to be politically correct. And 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 the the Abishta was not a politician. <laughs> I mean, Politics is man made. They, uh, God is the they truth. Don't have the knowledge. I, I agree with you. But let's they, let's not get involved. They study Tanya. They study Torah. They would have a very different opinion. I'm good. So let's bring it back to myself. Let's bring it back to myself. The Abishta gave you, we can say, what is your land of Eretz Yisrael? Is you. I'm the land of Israel. Shanti Besecha. The Abish says, make, make for me a sanctuary. I'll dwell in your midst. What is, what is me? Eretz Yisrael. I also gave away land. <laughs> I've given away land. I've given away. Right? I've given away my land. I've given away myself. Right? I've given away myself to other forces. So I've, uh, what am I worse than, uh, than, uh, than, uh, than, uh, than the people are giving away land in Israel? I'm giving away myself to forces that are not, that are, that are, that are, that are, that are destroying me. I'm giving away land to things that are self-destructive. And I'm giving it away with a dime. I'm giving away my own free choice. I've decided to give away this emotion, that emotion, that cast situation, this situation. I've given away. I've lost authority. I've given it away to my Nefesh Abamas. I give it away to my Yetzirah. I gave it away. I conceded. Right? I need peace. I need peace. <laughs> it's all in the name of peace. I need peace. I need Shalom Bayez. I need peace. I'm giving away. Peace I'm by peace. peace by peace. I'm giving away myself. I'm giving away myself. I'm giving away. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Gonna give it away. And that's. And that's why I fall into. And I. And 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 I. And I say it's for peace. And I, I'm giving away. I need peace. I need tranquility. This is gonna be me tranquility. Uh, my uh, smoking. My drinking. My 
my anger. This is giving me some tranquility. You're giving it away. You're giving yourself away. You're giving land away. You're giving land away. Your neshama says the whole land, this whole body belongs to me. You guys, your neshama said the land belongs to me from the head to the toe. It all belongs to me. Why are you giving it away? Right? Why are you giving your land away? Right? When you're doing Aveda, you gave your hand away. Right? When you, give, when you, get, when you say you're lush not, you're giving your mouth away. Why are you giving it away? Why are you giving it away? Why are you giving it away? For, why are you, you, for false concepts. You think it's going to give you uh, happiness. You think it's going to give you tranquility. You think it's going to give you branch. It's all Baba Mises. You're giving land away. So at least in English, there are multiple ways of hearing something. The English language is not very yeah. clear. And when God said he wants to dwell in our midst, in our midst he, he was not just talking about being in the tabernacle. He wants to be in our midst. That's the way. That's what I learned. Inside of, us. inside of us. That's my point. So the Abish said, I want to be inside of you. I want everything. I want to be everything. And you're giving it away. So why are you giving it away? Why are you why are you chasing me out? You're chasing me out of a certain place of your life. Why are you chasing me? And we all do it because we all have uh, things we shouldn't do. So surely, can you imagine if I have an evil tendency? I've given away. To, I've given away to, to evil. Right? It's enough. I give myself away to gosh me his physicality. Typhus is all that are kosher, that not you know, I have typhus. Everybody has typhus. I have desires. That's life. What should I do? I can't come over my desires. My my desires what are not bad. But if I have something bad, if I'm doing something bad, again, I'm a good person, I'm doing, I'm giving way. I'm giving him to, 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 to this bad thing. Oh, the Abisha says, What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you giving into why are you giving into evil? Why are you doing things that are evil? You're giving away, you're giving away yourself. Oh, I wish I was fabulous, but okay. I give away too, George. Trust me. Yeah, listen. But I try not to do evil. Try. It's not, it's not a, it's not an easy thing. To, to 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 not to do. It's not an easy thing. It's enough that you have typhus, you have desires, things that are just for the sake of selfishness. We all have that. The concept to 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 go to the next step where it becomes an evil thing. A hurtful it thing. Yes, yeah, starts out with desires. And then and then it just progresses. then it comes progresses to an evil thing. We have to when you recognize when a person drinks. Yeah. Well, drinking is not a terrible thing. When it starts hurting themselves, it's an evil thing. That's what it is. You have to recognize it's coming from an outside source. The Yetzahar. Uh, you have uh, people have neof. The uh, Alter Rebbe says in Tanya, the people have uh, uh, erotic thoughts. Not always evil. You can have some things that are. Uh, but then it goes to it can be transformed into evil. <laughs> Self understood. <laughs> you can have a, it goes into a pornography. You know whatever. You, this is a, you have to what? Yeah, uh, become addiction. Yeah, hundred percent. But how does it start off? It start off starts off with maybe a, a desire, which we, which is normal. Like the Alter Rebbe says, if a person doesn't have desire, maybe it's a cult on the shaman. So he has no desires. Uh, he's a cold soul. He has no desires. But uh, no person that has desires, he has desires. The Ebesh Baruch Hashem gave him these desires. Uh, thank God we have children in the world because of these desires. <laughs> God put it into us. So, but you take these desires food? and you 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 go to the next step. You can go to the next step and the next step and the next step, and then it becomes a uh, it can become like a terrible thing. And become addiction, it becomes self-destructive, and it can destroy everything in your life, and we all know that. So what about uh food, Rabbi. Yeah. What about food? Yeah, everything. Everything, everything, everything in this world. That's why it says 
The Mishnah says, be careful with things you're allowed to do. That's where everything starts, in the things you're allowed to do. You're allowed to drink, you're allowed to have sex, <laughs> food. You're allowed to do all these things. There's nothing wrong with them. <laughs> they could be, they're all good. But he shot me, be careful. Be careful. 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 It's not evil. It's not. I think that's that it's not. It's not. But then you start rationalizing why you need more. And that's why I need more. You need more. You always need more. You always need more. The Gemara says that the that the that the that the Abish to put certain things that we always need more. It's never satisfying. Right? We always need more. We always need more food. We always need more relationships. The ABC did that. It always needs more. So you can be, that's true. It's a good thing that Baruch Hashem it keeps us alive and it keeps life alive. It keeps, keeps marriages alive. It keeps it, keeps it, keeps it alive. Baruch Hashem. If we didn't have that, maybe we'd do this walk, uh, we'd go on different ways. You know, so you got to use it out for Kedusha. You got to use it out for a positive thing. You got to use it out for, for its true purpose. But then, you, if you cannot satisfy it, if you can never satisfy it, you cannot be happy what you have, then you have to find it someplace else. In, in energy medicine, whether it's food, alcohol, drugs, sex, alcohol, anything, anything is a distraction. It's a coping me mechanism from Rosh Hashem because they're in so much pain within them. They need to, they get triggered, not good enough, worthless, and then they go to their addiction. Right? And then they self sabotage and bash themselves because they did that. So the work is, like you said right at the beginning, it's an inside job. And I think the answer is there's my red line. I'm not going to be evil. I'm not going to be evil. What was the I'm question? I'm going to act evil. That's it. I'm going to stop. I'm going to realize when this thing is turning into something more than. It should be. And that's it. I need to stop. I need to stop. That's the Chachma. The Chachma, that's what I'm telling you. I believe again that al Rebbe tells the Chachma because the Chachma tells us that, that if I go too far, I've lost my potential. I'm losing my potential. I'm, 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 I'm clouding my potential. I'll never be able to be greater than myself if I'm going to go to this thing too far and if I'm going to push this thing too far. So I always need to remember that I am greater than myself, okay? And therefore, all these desires are there to be limited. My godliness is unlimited. My soul is unlimited. All these physical things are limited and they should stay limited. They should stay for a purpose. All the physical things that each is there for a purpose, not there for the unlimited aspect of it because it's not unlimited. And if it is unlimited, it might be very destructive, this unlimited concept. My unlimited is my wisdom. That's my unlimited. My soul is unlimited. Everything else is in its limitation. And everything is good in its limitation. Everything is good in its limitation. Food is good in its limitation. Relationship is good in its limitation. Everything is limited. It needs to be a limit to everything. So the work, the work okay. is healing the inside. Again, I say again, the work is that again, I realize my, my true potential, my, my true unlimited concept. My true unlimited is my soul. That is truly unlimited. And that, the more I connect to my soul, the more better it will be. Amen. The more I connect to the other limitations, the worse it most probably ultimately will be. But when a person when a person is caught in, in the addictive cycle, that they can't hear anything that means I know. So they very often, not always, have to reach their bottom where they're okay. fine, fine, fine. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not arguing with you. I don't listen, I I you know, I thank the Abish to every day that the Abish, for some reason he didn't make me addictive. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I am not an addictive person in general. It's not my personality to be addictive. Um, you know what I mean? I uh, to I try to get addicted. Or... <laughs> I wish, I wish, but I I don't I don't I don't I don't I, I whatever. I like things, but nothing is. I don't see. I it's overrated. 
So um, uh, everything is mostly overrated. It's great. It's overrated. It's overrated. Um, make it more than it is. It's, it's great, but uh, you can live without it. Trust me. Um, we shouldn't be addicted. But I understand people. I listen, I've dealt my whole life with people that are addicted. And I still deal, deal with people. Uh, my heart goes out. My heart truly goes out to people that struggle with their uh, with their addictions in life. And with the depressions, their unhappiness, their uh, et cetera. Listen, I'm a happy person. Uh, I know, but I'm unhappy right. too. I'm, I'm a happy too. I know what unhappiness is. It's not a, not to exclude it to unhappiness. But uh, thank God, I, 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 I try to express in, uh, myself in a happy way. And um, uh, I, I wish people could do the same thing. That they could, that they could, they could, uh, they can even in their sadness, they can find some aspect of happiness in the in their lives, and that's why I try in my speeches that I say Shabbos. You know, it's always an upbeat and uh, and overcoming to you know uh, to overcome one's 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 uh, oneself. You know, uh, and, and really that's what the Torah came. Let's have a because they the, to to make people better. Because God knew. God gave us our yetzahara. He gave us our, our desires. It's not, it's not that I went to the store and buy, bought them. The Abisha gave us desires. We use them out sometimes to the, you know, to the things that we shouldn't. But the, 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 the original concept is given to us by God. Unhappiness, sadness, desires. These are given to us by God. It's not the, it's the, this is not the... Not uh, something that anybody would acquire. If you ask a person, uh, you should you would you you want unhappiness? Why would you want unhappiness? You want addiction. Who would want addiction in their lives? So they wish to gave everybody this challenge. And as the Alter Rebbe says today in Tanya, when the Abisha gives you a challenge, he gives you the greatest mitzvah that follows that is that's given with this challenge. He gives you the greatest mitzvah that follows this challenge. And that is the pasuk says, "Do not follow the whims of your heart and the desires of your eyes." So I gave you the whim of your heart that you have a desire when you when you see something, you hear something. I gave you your eyes that sees things and you desire it. And then I said, "Lay sasura." I asked you to overcome it. So I gave you a mitzvah. Every time you overcome your desire, you're doing a mitzvah. So instead of thinking about the negative, think about the positive. So make a, a joyful celebration on the positive that you overcame it. I gave you the desire. You overcame it. You got a mitzvah. And what did I gain out of it? Nothing. What did, who gained out of it? You gained out of it. Because you proved to yourself that you can overcome it. And once you prove to yourself that you can overcome it, once you prove to yourself the first time that you can really overcome it, You'll overcome it. Isn't that what? Um, but you never prove to yourself. You fake yourself also in your overcoming, and you lie to yourself. You need to truly prove to yourself. How do you prove to yourself that you overcome something? The Rambam asked that question. How does one prove to himself that he's overcome it? Not that when he overcomes it, is when he, the challenge comes again. Then you have proven if you have overcome it. That that you overcome something, you overcame it. Baruch Hashem. What's going to happen in an hour for now? What's going to happen mm -hmm. in a day for now? What's going to happen in a week for now? When the challenge comes again, now you'll prove. Did you overcome it? Or did you just, uh, you know, Brad, walk to it? Well, right? Side to overcome it. Right? Side to overcome it. Right. right, correct. Right. Actually right. overcoming. God said to Cain, right. you can, oh, um, uh, that, that, that evil is waiting at the door and you can overcome it. You can overcome it. It's... it's it is. That's life. He did the That's, the way they wish they, that's it. They wish they wants to either either gonna overcome it. And ultimately, Siddhis goes even a step further. Siddhis says that actually that that you didn't overcome it first time is a positive thing. Because that made you overcome it for the future. So you would never know if you would overcome an Aveda if you would never did the Aveda. So you need to take that sin that you've done or that negative thing you have done. And prove it that you'll never ever do it again. And Shem gave him a sign on his body. And that's it. That's that's the power of the sin itself. So the sin itself has proven to you that you can overcome it.
And that's why the tzaddik never had such a situation that he had to that he that he proved overcome anything because he never had the chance. Right, correct. So a tzaddik, right? So a righteous man doesn't have that opportunity. So the 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 regular people that us that don't overcome things, we fall into things. Like I said, like I said yesterday, a person does a sin. We all do sins. A person says, "I like sin." <laughs> That's a whole different story. That's a whole different story. Person I have that, a question. Person that falls into good, slavery. Man. One second. Person that falls into slavery. That's life. We all fall into slavery here or there or something else. Person says, "I like slavery." Yeah. Now that's the, the the problem. That he has to make a thing in his ear because the person that has to think has to listen again. Person that falls and says, I like slavery, has to listen again. He's gotta, he's gotta go learn more. He's gotta realize that something is wrong when you say, I like slavery. I fall into slavery. It's life. I mean, I have, a, I have an effigy of Bahamas, I have an animal soul. It's gonna fall, I'm gonna fall into slavery. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do a mistake. I'm a human being, I'm gonna do a mistake. But to rationalize the mistake, to say it's okay, so I am. Live with me. Take me the way I am. Uh, this is who I am. And tough luck, you know. Uh, that's sadness. That is a sad situation. That's a sad situation. Yeah. What do you want to say, Jenny? Um, yes. We vase, man. We didn't budge anyway. Okay, yeah? Oh, I, I'm here. I, I don't know if you have an answer for this. Yeah. But that's fine if you don't. Yeah. So What's your question? About- Let me say your question. Thing about addiction and all of that is most people. I'm not going to say all, but most the majority of people that have addiction problems, it's because the addiction, whatever the thing is, is doing something for them, and they don't know how to get. They don't right. know how to get what it's doing for them a different way. Whether they, you know, they have a problem, they're distracting, or it brings them some sort of fake spirituality, or whatever it is. So, how does the Torah like look at that? part of it it's not necessarily i like it because i just like it oh right. let's have some fun no it's like it's doing right. a thing that i like the to, fact that you're right. I yeah that's I'm the saying. problem they have to find they have to they have to they have to find that the tater can give them everything that the tater and mitzvahs can give them everything that they need they don't need anything else they don't need anything else and they don't want to they want to ask the Rebbe, uh, uh marijuana the guy actually it was a video that a guy asked the Rebbe about marijuana. You know, if it's legal, it's not legal, okay, so it's not legal, but if it's legal, why, why, is it, if you, is it anything wrong for you to take marijuana? So the Rebbe said, anything that needs to, anything, a yid, if a yid needs anything outside to make him happy, then he's missing something inside. Mm-hmm. And and in the and and a yid, a Jew, and maybe a human being in general, needs to find something happiness within him. He's got to find, and and that's why you learn Siddis. Siddis tells you you should be happy with the neshama that Abishta gave you. Abishta gave you a unique neshama, different than anybody, and learn about your neshama. And maybe if you learn about your neshama, that will give you your kick in life. That will give you your your fix. It'll give you your joy. Maybe. Uh, the marijuana will give you only joy for the moment. It's going to give you, you'll need more marijuana. And you'll always need to take marijuana. So the Abish did, did, didn't want that. But the Abish did gave marijuana. He created marijuana. Imagine if God didn't create marijuana. That would be the best situation. The Abish created marijuana. So the person should say, you know what? I need to have marijuana. Right? That's a challenge. The person should say, I need marijuana. I need the marijuana. So, uh, but really, he does need the marijuana. Now, I'm not talking some people, now, some people need marijuana for health reasons. I'm not going to go into that, that aspect. I'm talking about to get a high. You know, to, to, you're right, because people use these addictions to get out of their tzadahs. But how do you change it that? It is a that's, drug. That's it's not a, a simple, yeah. you know, like, how do you get to know your neshama? How do you, like, how do you change? I'm on Sundays, learn this. It's a huge problem. Learning. Like, Keep people don't really Keep know learning. what to do. Keep on learning. Keep on learning. Don't stop. 
Keep on learning. Keep on learning. We'll open up more books. Never end learning. Keep on learning. Trust me. If a person would occupy himself in learning Torah, he'll find joy. He'll find. I've I've tried it. I've done it. You're gonna. You if you if you would occupy yourself, learn every day Torah. I'm telling you, change the way it, the the Torah is the best healthy marijuana out there to buy. It's free also. You push it. I trust me. If people would learn Torah every day, they would wake up in the morning and learn Torah. They go to sleep at night and learn Torah. You'll see. It'll change the way you okay. think. But I know a lot of people that do that, and they still have addiction. No, problems. they're not learning. No, they're not learning. Kind of they, they, let them learn more. Let them learn more. The Torah, it you start thinking different. That's the way it is. It's not the. the, the I never met people that are marijuana push it to learn Torah. I have not met the people yet. I, I have. I have not. Okay, tell them to call me up, and then I will see how much. And I'll, they'll see how much they'll tell they're learning. So, um, they, you know, what I mean, it's not true. The Gemara, the Torah says that the that the Torah will 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 will, uh, will uh, change the way you think, and will put you on a whole different level. So the question is if the if they're learning Torah. Can, can so I the, say something? You can say whatever the, you want. The, the Torah, the the reason that. Twelve step program is the only thing that works is because the third thing is to recognize that there's a power greater than you. It's, the Torah teaches the whole purpose of Torah is to teach, to teach you that there's something greater than you. When you take the focus over off yourself, you heal in everything. Very good. I like it. My my students can take the vouch. Yeah. You'll see kids in yeshiva learning day and night, and they're and they're having addiction problems. Because they're not, not learning. Trust me, they're not learning day and night. Trust me, I've been in yeshiva. <laughs> they're not learning. Not everybody's in yeshiva learning day and night. Trust me, right now, they're, they're, those guys that are smoking marijuana are not learning day and night. Okay, they're, but they're learning. But they're not they're learning, learning day and night. They're not learning they to, to learn. So you're Tata saying refines they would, they a person. Learn more, they'd stop, or is it they have to learn? They have to learn better. Is it more or is it different? Not because the, most kids are hanging on yeshiva as a as a as a dormitory. It's a yeshiva. A lot of kids are the yeshiva oh. as a place to the parents want to want them there, not on the streets, That's which is good true. also. But uh, whatever. Also, oh, what what are you learning? In other words, if you just any title, any title, any title, any title. If a person learns, it's a it's a mishnah. A person said, most uh, whatever it is, said this most uh, learn title. The Muslim movement came up because this learning was not Learning's enough. Learning is enough. Anything. Sit and learn tighter. If a person would sit and learn tighter, they wouldn't do anything wrong out there. Trust me. If a person learned tighter, if Yeshiva Bachar would learn tighter the way they're supposed to learn, if we all learned tighter, we would be, we wouldn't be, we would be have a problem. Tamid Chachamim are not smoking marijuana. I can promise you right now. Okay? Because they're sitting and learning tighter. Another time to waste to on this on Nadashkite. When you when you when you when you have too much time on your hand and you're not it doesn't make a difference to your shiva bacha, you have too much time in your hand, you're doing things that are not you know doing things that are not right. Mm -hmm. That's the way it is. Okay. So uh, so tell me the chamim are tell me the chamim. They're sitting and learning tighter. You need to sit and learn tighter, and it doesn't make a difference to Tamachakh, not Tamachakh, you need to learn tighter, and everybody who learn tighter would stick out of problems. The Gemara says, the Mishnah says, people that learn tighter and do work, they'll never they don't have time to do an Aveda. If you learn Tata and you work, you have no time. You have no time. Why do we get involved in all this? Because we to have too much time. People have pushed too much time today. That's true. That's true. They're thinking too much. They're thinking and thinking and overthinking and overthinking and overthinking like the great tummy, like they're running the world. You have kids today that are 13, they think they're running the world. <laughs> my, my little grandchild thinks she's running the world. They think they're running the world. And all the problems of the world on them. All the things. Relax. Be a kid. Enjoy life. You're not running the world yet. Don't worry. When you'll run the world, you'll be you'll have anxieties. Why are you a six, seven-year-old kid having anxieties? Relax. What, what, what is anybody asking from you? Enjoy life. But we think we're running the world. We think we're running the world. We're not running the world. Davish is running the world. God is running the world. And let him run the world. Don't get involved in the running of the world. Let them run. Run yourself. Run, run, run yourself. Run yourself. 
Okay, guys, what a great uh, opportunity to learn. I know we got into marijuana. God bless you all. <laughs>